Hey, what's up guys? Brian here, Brian's Law and Maintenance. Trust you guys are doing well. Hey, wanted to come at you with our top 10 plowing uh, rookie mistakes that I have made or I have seen people make while plowing snow. Let's check it out. So a lot of you guys know this is my first year plowing snow and definitely learning a lot. Now, this is my brand new truck. This is a 2017 F-250 Lariat and we got the brand new Boss DXT plow. But one of the things that I have not told most of you guys, at least not on camera, is that this is the first year I've ever commercially plowed snow I've never been in a plow truck before I've never plowed snow so as you can imagine there is a lot of life lessons a lot of learning lessons with the plow the truck everything man my head hurts almost at the end of the day sometimes getting baptized by fire learning the snow game now I will put a disclaimer out there I do not expect you guys to get started the same way plowing snow I do not expect you guys to take a $65,000 rig and go tool around at 2 in the morning in some random parking lot that's not lit so let me give you guys my top 10 list or my top 10 things I've learned as a rookie plowing snow. I'm gonna do this one kind of quick because as you guys can probably expect, it's about five degrees out here. So number one, let's talk about the fact that most people, they don't know their properties. And what do I mean by that? Well, most guys, they never go through their property and they don't figure out an attack plan or a game plan to plow the snow. It's a little bit more than just pushing it into a pile. You got to know where to push it to, where the uh, traffic areas are, where the drainage systems are, all that kind of stuff. When you're talking about residentials, you got to make sure that you know your property lines as well. Now, that's not too big of a deal when you're in a subdivision because they all kind of look the same. But I had a story where I went and did my friend's property. He had a split level ranch at his parents' house. And the one driveway comes all the way around the back to the side of the house, as you guys can imagine. And literally, he has a 10 foot drop off uh, to the side of the house. Well, this guy went and tried to back drag some snow from his pole barn and my truck got stuck. It got stuck so bad that the rear end kicked out. And basically, I took my new $65,000 truck off a 10 foot cliff. So. No big deal when you're a positive guy. My wife was with me. We had already been up for 25 hours straight plowing snow. What did we do? We put it into four low and we crawled out of that thing like we were in the new Justice League movie, the Batman Tumblr, whatever that thing is called. This thing was goosh, goosh, goosh going up the side of this hill. We were getting thrashed around. It was crazy. So that was my funny quick story about know your property, know your property lines, and know where the driveway is, and don't fall off the side of a cliff. Uh, I had my wife looking out the window, and she could see the ground. That's because my truck was literally probably at a 40 degree angle, and I thought I was gonna roll my $70,000 truck. And if all you guys are laughing and thinking, wow, this guy's a noob, trust me, I agree, and I know exactly what you're saying. Number two, that kind of relates with number one, is that they don't create a site map, or they don't stake their property lines. This place, for example, I'm in a parking lot right by my house, there is no orange snow stakes or flags anywhere in this whole place. How do you know where your islands are? How do you know where the boundary lines are? I get if you've done it a long time in the residentials, it's probably no big deal. But you gotta be realistic. When you're doing a commercial property at two o'clock in the morning and there's no parking lights uh, on in the parking lot, you gotta have those orange stakes out there and you have to have your boundaries marked. That way you don't smash the curb. Number three for you guys is staying focused. Now, a lot of us, we plow 12, 14, 20 hours straight. Some of you guys, you run hours that are just ridiculous. God bless if you do uh, I'm not that good uh, but some of you guys have 18 24 hour routes man that's just nuts but you got to stay focused out there I don't care if you got to pop an energy drink I don't care if you guys got to take a two-hour nap and get some rest but you got to stay focused let me give an example one thing that I always uh, laugh is that I've heard many 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 stories of guys coming up a residential driveway you're in the fatigue of the night you're just getting too comfortable heaven forbid you're getting distracted with the cell phone or the radio and guys they go into a residential driveway they drop the blade or they forget to hit reverse and they went through the garage of somebody's house at three in the morning I have heard stories like that I have not done that thank God I never will let's knock on wood right but you got to stay focused when you're out there uh, so don't get too distracted don't try to get distracted at all obviously but staying focused that would be number three number four another one that I can give you guys is that you have to make sure that your truck is fueled up I actually learned this one once or twice I did not uh, estimate how much fuel I would actually go through uh, plowing snow back and forth in a parking lot uh, and it doesn't sound like it takes a lot but those low rpms you're burning a lot of gas all that back and forth 
uh, just to make your 10 hour runs, you can go through a quarter tank of gas before you know it. And you know, sometimes uh, at two, three, four in the morning, you're in a different part of town, there's no gas stations nearby or whatever. You wanna make sure that your truck is fueled up. Number five is similar to one and two. You have to know where your curbs are. Again, if you're not staking property lines, you're gonna be smashing those curbs. And more specifically, when you're in a parking lot or at a commercial property and you hit those curbs, you gotta know when to lift that blade up. Now, of course, you don't wanna lift it too early. I'm getting better at that all the time, but you gotta make sure that you're watching out for those curbs. Don't let the wings of your plow get nailed or knocked off. Not only that, make sure you're looking at those orange stakes on your plow, and that way you know where your plow uh, blades are at so you're not smashing into those curbs. Let's keep going. I don't know if this is number five or number six, but the next one I can give you guys is you gotta learn the different angles with your plow. And what do I mean specifically? Well, if you've got residential driveways that are gonna meet onto the road, you gotta know your angles. I had my boss V blade in the straight position, so I was just plowing snow, clearing that last three feet at the end of a subdivision driveway, and I did not know how steep the drop off was for this driveway, and my plow just jolted me for it, as you guys can imagine, because the left corner of the blade, it hit the sewer right there and caught, and that V blade just popped back, like you wouldn't believe, smashed me in the truck. That was an interesting one that you feel at three in the morning when you're not expecting it. So you gotta make sure you're dropping your blade inside the residential driveway by one feet. So that, that blade is on the driveway when you're scooping that last three feet of ice at a driveway, for example. But you gotta know those angles sometimes in your attack plan and know your concrete. And that just, again, comes with experience about learning your properties and learning what you got going on. Number six or number seven, wherever we're at in this list, one thing that I see is a lot of guys that go way too fast. I know that your truck can go 35 miles per hour and you need that momentum to push that snow, especially that wet snow. But I've seen a lot of guys that just plain out go way too fast plowing snow, especially when they're coming up the sidewalk. For a lot of these commercial properties, you gotta make sure that you're slowing down so you're not spilling that snow off onto the sidewalk and putting it back where you just shoveled off. But number two, you gotta make sure you're going slow so you're not smoking any concrete or anything crazy and giving that plow that room to trip. Number seven that I can get for you guys is when you're too fatigued and you're too tired. This was kind of covered in a, one of the earlier points, but you guys gotta remember to get some sleep. I know it's tough out there, but I see so many guys run too hard for too soon. And I know there's a window to get stuff done. I'm cognizant of that, but you guys gotta remember, take a three or four hour sleep or nap before you go out there and make your snow run. If you know it's gonna snow at three in the morning and it's gonna get done and you gotta go out there and make your rounds, make sure you take a nap from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., then get up and go make those runs. Don't just try to marathon it. Don't just try to muscle it out. You gotta make sure you're getting some sleep in there so you can stay alert, you can stay fresh, and get the job done. Let's wrap it up with my final two, and these are good. Number nine, one thing I would tell you guys, you gotta make sure you have your contracts or agreements in place. And what do I mean by that? That means you have your legal protection. You have your liability cover. That means you have your hold harmless clauses in your contracts, all that kind of stuff. You have to have really good contracts that protect you and not only that when you pick up new clients whether they're residential or commercial don't get lazy and start plowing things without having signatures you don't want to be damaging up commercial or residential properties without having those hold harmless clauses and contracts in place so that way you're more protected if something does happen I know it's really easy for somebody to wave you over drop the blade make 50 bucks 100 bucks 200 bucks but man I always try to CYA you can google that term later but make sure you're protecting yourself your business it only takes one accident, one silly mistake that's gonna cost you potentially tens of thousands of dollars. All right guys, last but not least, if you're still sticking with me, I'm giving you one of the best ones that I have learned personally, and that is not keeping proper logs for your snow removal. And some of you guys, you know what I'm talking about. The other half of you guys probably are scratching your head going, we need to keep snow logs. Yes, you need to keep snow removal logs. That means you record your time you were at the property, the weather conditions at the property, how much snow, where you put it, any little details that you notice about the property. And make sure you're keeping a log, whether you use an Excel sheet, you use a, uh, a program that manages it, whatever it is, I always turn in those snow removal log sheets to our commercial clients. That way they know when we were there, how much snow, and there's proof, there is a uh, paper trail, as my friend Mike 
Mike likes to call it. So make sure you're doing snow logs, find a template on Google, do whatever you gotta do, but make sure you're filling out your snow logs, make sure you're tracking your income, make sure you're tracking your money. The weeks can start blending together in the winter, especially with all that snow removal, and you don't know if you were out that, at that property two times or three times. You don't remember if you were there for one hour, two hours, and how much you have to bill. And whether you're hourly or contract, you gotta make sure you're logging all that kind of data. All right, guys, I know I came at you quick. Like I said, it's about five degrees out here. It is literally New Year's Day. Happy New Year to all of you guys. I know we're all gonna crush 2018. I'd love to know what some of your guys' rookie plow mistakes. You guys got any rookie plow fails? If so, leave them down below. I am not the authority, guys, as most of you know. I'm learning this every single day. I'm having a blast plowing snow. I would encourage you, don't learn on a $70,000 rig. Go borrow your buddy's truck, go out, tear up his equipment, and have some fun plowing snow and making money. All right, guys, over and out. Wanted to say a big thank you for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button if you haven't already. If you guys haven't subscribed, I invite you to do that. I'm doing this out in the cold for you guys. I'm shivering, I'm freezing my butt off for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. Rock and roll, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Over and out. Bye-bye.